us, the nature of our jobs has changed over the past few years, but that unfortunately doesn't stop people from getting hurt at work, especially if you're hurt by someone else's carelessness. Uh, what are your rights there? Uh, well, a recent decision from the Michigan Court of Appeals is shedding some additional light on that subject. And for that, we go to Tom Sinus from Sinus Dramas Law Firm to learn more. Hey, Tom. Hi, Todd. How are you doing? I'm well. Can you break down the basics? Let's get to just like the very basics of workmen's comp, work, workers' compensation benefits. Great place to start because it's it's most likely something everyone's heard of, whether or not they've had one of these claims or not. So the idea of workers' compensation benefits is to pro provide a way for employees who are injured at work to get benefits for things like medical care and lost wages if they're injured at work. Before we had workers' compensation benefits, we had a long, long time ago, we had situations where employees could sue their, in, their employer if they were injured at work. Workers' compensation is designed to limit employers' exposure to lawsuits from their employees, and in exchange, give employees access to workers' compensation benefits, including most significantly medical benefits and lost wages if they're injured at work. And this paradigm here that has a trade-off, and the trade-off is sometimes what we call an exclusive remedy. That means that if you're an employee in a traditional employee-employer situation, like many people are, you can get only workers' compensation benefits from your employer. Those are the exclusive remedy. Meaning that with the exception of some narrow exceptions, the employee cannot sue their employer in what we would call a tort claim or a liability claim. That is the workers' compensation benefits become the exclusive remedy. And this is how most employee, employer or worksite injury cases are handled. They're handled through the workers' compensation system, and there is not lawsuits brought by the employee against the employer for workplace injuries. So that's the general idea. But as I just mentioned in the intro, work has changed. I mean, a lot of us are independent contractors. You know, you hear that term tossed out around, or the, the gig economy, you know, where we're working numerous jobs. How does this affect that? That is an excellent question. And that's where we saw a recent decision from the Court of Appeals and a similar one a couple of years ago because everything I just said is true, but everything I said depends upon having that traditional, traditional employee-employer relationship. Well, your question gets to the question of, huh, what if the person's not an employee? How do we know whether or not the person's an employee? Because that's gonna determine whether or not the injured person has this exclusive remedy or whether or not they may be able to sue for a liability claim. So what has happened at the Court of Appeals is the Court of Appeals has reminded us that we have a specific state statute that tells us who is an employee. And it says as follows, to be an employee subject to the workers' comp, the court must find that a person, number one, does not maintain a separate business, number two, does not hold himself or herself out and render service to the public, and number three is not themselves an employer. Another way of saying that is if the person is not an employee and therefore not subject to this exclusive remedy, if they maintain a separate business, if they hold themselves out and render service to the public or they themselves are an employer, if they're one of those things, then they're not an employee. If all those boxes are checked, then they are an employee. And so we've seen cases from the Court of Appeals dealing with people who are injured on the job who aren't in that classic employee, employer, you know, W-2 type relationship. And the courts are reminding us that it's these three characteristics that we have to look at when ask, asking ourselves the basic threshold question of whether or not the injured person is actually an employee. Because if they're not an employee, then this whole concept of the exclusive remedy, that is workers' comp being the only remedy, that doesn't apply. And the second point here is that the Court of Appeals has reminded us now, I think a couple of times, that just because the injured person might receive those workers' compensation benefits, like let's just say the, the gig employee, the independent contractor gets the benefits because everybody thinks that maybe they're entitled to receive them, just because they receive them doesn't mean that that's the way it should be. In other words, it doesn't mean 
that the injured person uh, is subject to this exclusive remedy rule. So that's kind of a law, a lot of law all packed in there. But the short version of that is when you have a non-traditional working relationship between the person who was injured and the circumstance that caused their injury, it requires kind of a closer examination to figure out how do these rules all apply? Well, it looks like it's something that we're going to be diving into even more and more as that type of work continues to grow for anyone out there who needs more information, or maybe they're going through this now. How do they get a hold of you? They can find us online at www.sinusdramus.com. They can shoot us an email at info at sinusdramus.com or give us a call in West Michigan at 616-301-3333.